In the beginning, when the first flame was discovered, a world of perfect parody was shattered. Gray arch trees gave way to both warm skies and frigid climes. Everlasting immortality was replaced by mortal lives lived in their natural conclusions. But the first flame wasn't the only fire, and the mother of all pyromancy used the strength of that primordial force to create something new, a power unlike any other thus far. The power of chaos. But just how strong is that power? Strong enough to, perhaps, beat every boss with nothing but chaos weapons and spells, maybe? Or, to put it more succinctly, can you beat Dark Souls with only chaos damage? The rules are delightfully simple compared to my last video. If I deal any damage at all, it just needs to be with a chaos weapon or a chaos pyromancy, like Great Chaos Fireball. We'll be starting our run the moment we arrive in Lorgen, since the glitch to skip the Asylum Demon damage list seems to require a controller, and I kinda... don't own one of those right now. I actually play exclusively on keyboard and mouse, which makes certain tricks and glitches much harder. Once we arrive in Lordran, the first thing we need to do is pretty dangerous, so let's put our souls to use real quick. Hunt down the undead merchants and buy the residence key and a single dagger. It's a surprise duel that'll help us later. Then with that out of the way, we need to confront the big ol' elephants in the room. Namely, that there are absolutely no chaos spells or weapons available at the start of the game. They're all either locked behind Quellag's boss soul, the Chaos Servant Covenants of the DLC, or in Lost Isolith. As such, we're not going to treat this quite as a glitchless run, but as a glitch-less one, where we'll be keeping our glitches to only when there's absolutely no other option. The first thing that we need to do is get an offensive spell of some kind, and fortunately, that's pretty easy if you know the right maneuver. We'll be going down through New Londo Ruins into the Valley of Drake so that we can get to Blighttown, where we'll pop in to say hi to our compatriot in Chaos Quellag for a quick second, before letting her kill us at the Backfog Wall. Next, we're going to work our way up Blighttown. Go pick up power within if you're confident you can, since we'll need it eventually. But either way, while we're down here, we'll be going and breaking some pots and reality along with them, activating the death cam so that we can run all the way through Blighttown again and enter Quellag's boss arena. The reason why we came and said hi first is because if her introductory cutscene plays while you're in the death cam, it'll turn her AI and the boss fog on as a result, making it impossible to walk past her. But with the cutscene already watched, we can just saunter our way past Quellag using our death marker to tell us when we reach the other fog wall. From here, move forward a bit and hug the right wall as best you can, and watch for when your character moves sharply in a different direction. That's your hint that you've reached a stairwell, which counts as solid ground, so we can quit out and load back in behind the fog wall. Wave hello to Quellag again, and then pull the lever to ring your first spell of awakening before heading downstairs to her sister's bonfire, which we will not be sitting at, as that would softlock the game. Here we're going to join the Chaos Serving Covenant so that we can get our first attacking spell in the game. Great Chaos Fireball, the MVP of this run and the only attack we're going to have for at least a fair while. There's a second spell available here, Chaos Storm, but it requires 30 humanity, an amount we can't get at this point in the game without some kind of attack unless we use another glitch. I'll keep it in mind for if we hit a roadblock it can help with, but for now, we'll just leave with Great Chaos Fireball. Once we have this spell, we'll be homeward boning out. Going forward, try to hold onto your souls whenever possible. We'll need a lot of them to pay for what we need, and the fewer we lose, the less grinding we're stuck doing. For now, attune your Chaos Fireball and realize that Chaos Spells take two attunement slots each, something to keep in mind while we're progressing. Next, we'll be descending down to New Londo. You can pick up the Firekeeper Soul if you want the healing buff, but our primary goal is through the Valley of the Drakes. We'll need to grab the Red Tearstone Ring here. Normally, a plunging attack would be the safest way to get down, but since we can't deal damage, we'll instead be taking several steps to the side and jumping off behind some of the drakes. This will cause some of them to turn around before attacking, which gives you just enough time to recover from the fall and book it out of the area. Once we move into Dark Root Basin, make sure to pick up the Grass Crest Shield for the stamina regen going forward, since it's completely legal as long as we don't hit anything with it. Then optionally, you can pick up the Elite Knight set from Dark Root. I did this to make fighting the Capra Demon a little less painful, but it's optional for folks who are more confident in their skills. Next, we'll be heading through the Undead Parish, save Loudrick along the way to save ourselves some time doing it later, then drop down and out of the area to get the basement key from outside the chapel. There's another Firekeeper Soul here too, if you want it. With this, we'll run backwards through the parish to get to the Drake's Bridge to gain access to the lower Undead Burg. While you can fight the dogs on the way to Griggs with the powers of chaos, I personally found it easier to just lead them into the fire and walk past their charred remains. Freeing Griggs is important since we'll need the Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring to make the Capra Demon feasible to beat without ripping all of our hair out. One small complication, though, it costs 20,000 souls, and we don't exactly have an abundance. There are two ways to solve this problem. The easy and boring way, or the hard but more interesting one. Full marks for guessing which one I went with. To start, if you didn't grab power within while doing Quellag Skip, do it now. 
It's required for the hard route and for a lot of the later content too. Start off with a pretty straightforward task of killing the Taurus demon. Run up to him, angle his back towards one of the walls, and throw a fireball. If his back is to a wall, then even if he jumps backwards, he'll stay in the lava pool. Be aware that you can't really afford to miss here. If you do, you might as well just let him kill you near the entrance first, easy soul retrieval, since you need to hit him with all four casts to kill him. He drops 3,000 souls by himself, which is less than a quarter of what we need. But there is another 11,200 souls ready for us, in exchange for a bit of a challenge. Make your way down to Darkroot Garden, where we're going to be fighting the Moonlight Butterfly. Taking it down is actually fairly tough, since even all four fireballs with lava damage isn't enough to kill it. But that's why we got power within. Step inside the arena, block and dodge the attacks for around a minute or so, and then cast it. Then, when the butterfly flies down, start casting the first fireball just before it lands. This is so that we have enough time to fire all four shots before it retaliates and flies off, letting us kill it in one cycle for 10,000 souls, and a consumable worth 1,200. Now, with us being still a couple thousand souls shy, we'll top ourselves off by using the Hellkite Bridge Farm. The easy way was just doing this farm 40 times, by the way. Bit too boring for me. Once you've gone up and bought the ring, head back down to Lowerberg. While you can clear out most of the enemies in Lowerberg without casting thanks to the fire near the stairs, I actually recommend using the Firelink Waterway route for this fight. Running the dogs into the fire every time you die is just too harsh, making the Firelink run easier this time around, especially since, if you're like me, you're going to be doing this fight quite a few times before you win. You don't need to be in hyper mode for this fight if you've got the Bellowing Ring, thankfully, so make sure that you have it equipped and enter with as close to full health as you can get. Unless the dogs put you in RTSR range, like they did to me, in order to win this fight, you need to land all four throws of your Great Chaos Fireball and get a hit from the Lava Pool. When the fight starts, if the Capra Demon performs a jumping attack, roll out of the way. If it's a normal swing, you can safely block it. Cast a Great Chaos Fireball, and your armor should let you poise through the attack from the first dog to finish the cast. Your goal is to hit the Capra Demon and let the Lava kill the dog. Preferably both, but that's not always an option. Keep your health high, and don't take unnecessary risks. Better have a 2 minute fight than 10 1 minute fights. Uh, note that if you're unsure if you can meet the damage check, but the dogs are dead, there's always the option of letting the Capra Demon smack you into Red Seer Stone range for that extra 40% damage for a clutch finisher. It can be really slow to do, but eventually you will be able to land the perfect run of the fight and finally take the win, netting you the key to the depths and a humanity for your troubles. The reason we needed the key is to free Laurentius, since he's the only option we have to level up our Pyromancy Flame, considering the fact that Angie requires we beat Quellag, or that we do the Quellag skip every time we want to level it up. Running into the depths to save our local Swamp Dweller is pretty trivial. Just make sure that you don't accidentally bring the Butcher into the room where they can sneak up and kill you from behind. Now to use a bunch of those souls we've gathered thus far. Along with the extras from the folks who ran into the fire before Capra, you should hopefully have around 10,000 souls, just enough to get your Pyromancy Flame to plus 5 and increase your Magic Adjust stat by 25%, which will be pretty helpful going forward. Head downstairs for just a quick second so we can kill off Loutric before we get the Gargoyles. Kicking him off the ledge would be easier, but it just doesn't fit the spirit of the run if you ask me. A couple of fireballs later and he's dead as can be and no longer a threat to Anastasia after we ring the bell. Speaking of which, sprinting up to and through the parish to the roof should hopefully be fairly easy. If you get body blocked, just hope and pray you have the time to parry them out of the way, though be careful not to repost and accidentally invalidate the run. Hyper mode helps a lot in this fight, but isn't technically necessary. If you have the bellowing ring and a plus five flame, you can kill the first gargoyle by landing two direct hits and having both of them deal lava damage. The second gargoyle dies if you land one direct hit with lava damage. As long as you don't miss and deal three hits of lava, you'll be able to take the win and a nice boatload of souls that we'll immediately spend on our Pyromancy Flame, taking it up to plus six or plus seven, depending on if you saved up a couple consumable souls. If you're in need of some stronger healing, you can now safely grab the Blighttown Firekeeper Soul. If you'd grabbed it before Lautric, we'd have lost the Firelink Bonfire, which would have been a tad inconvenient. Do be aware that if you do this though, you're probably going to need to gather up a couple extra humanities for reasons that'll make sense later. Our next two goals happen to coincide with each other delightfully well. We need 43,000 souls to upgrade our Pyromancy Flame to plus 10, and the Iron Golem drops both 40,000 straight and a consumable worth 8,000. Make your way through Sens like you normally would and face off against the boss of these lands. You don't really need any fancy setups for this one. Rush him while he's still on the distant bridge and deal enough damage to his legs that he falls off. Once he does, run all the way back down, for down to Firelink and enhance your flame. Depending on your soul management and whether you sell some items to Framp like I did, you should be somewhere between plus 10 and plus 12, which will make the next step marginally less painful. Our target now is the Darkroot Basin's Hydra, so that we can get two pieces of important equipment. Fighting the Hydra is annoying, but not impossible here. With a plus 10 flame and power within active, we can just barely get the kill if we land all four shots. The reason we're doing this 
after the Iron Golem is because with only a plus 5 flame, we would have to be in red tier stone range, which is just too brutal when you have to spend so much time carefully getting the Hydra to kill the Crystal Golems for you. Land 4 shots on 4 heads, and the beast is slain, rewarding us with a Dust Crown Ring. A ring that cuts our maximum health in half, but grants us an extra few casts on our spells. Normally, this ring ends up relegated more to getting reliable RTSR setups, but considering the fact that we've been working with only 4 spells this entire game, and have Ornstein and Smaug coming up, we'll need all the help we can get. After this, Homeward Bones to restore your casts, and then go run into the cave behind the Hydra and kill the Crystal Golem to save Dusk. Go outside and summon her near the corpse in the water, and lamentably realize that she sells nothing chaotic. Go back to the cave the Golem was in again, and pick up the other piece of equipment we wanted, the Crown of Dusk. That's an additional 20% damage, on top of the 20% from Bellowing, the 40% from Power Within, and the 50% from RTSR when we need it. If we need more spells, we'll trade out the Bellowing Ring for Dusks and get a total of 6 casts on our Fireball, which should set us up for all that we need right now. Seeing as upgrading our Flame any further will take tens of thousands of souls, we're now ready to go head into Anor Londo. Run all the way through Sens again, and get carted off by some of your Chaos-infused compatriots, and get ready to just kind of run through the area. There's nothing of real note here, just get to Ornstein Smau and be ready for what is simultaneously one of the harder fights, but also one of the shorter when done well. You should be equipped with the Dusk Crown Ring, Bellowing Dragon Crest Ring, Crown of Dusk, Power Within, and your Chaos Fireballs. You're hoping to see Ornstein do his charge at you. If he does, just roll out of the way and slam him with a fireball. If you can land a second one, then you've pretty much got him dead as a doornail, and you should already be in the super phase. If not, then dodge away. Smau is almost certainly coming at you from behind. Play cautiously. If you miss, then you might as well die, since you don't have enough casts to spare. Once we kill Ornstein, then Super Smau should be fairly easy. Run straight at him. If he prepares his charge, turn around and bolt away. Otherwise, just roll through his attack to smack him with his fireball. If he does his upwards jumping attack, that's the best time to aim directly at his feet with a free aim throw in order to be able to almost guarantee lava damage. Do this four times, and he should be dead. Pretty easy fight in concept, but the execution is where it becomes a major time sink. Still way better than trying to glitch Super Ornstein through the wall to fall to his death. But nonetheless, it's still a fight that's going to result in a lot of resets for the less unfortunate, myself included. With 60,000 souls and the Lord Vessel in tow, we can teleport back to Laurentius and upgrade our flame to between plus 13 and plus 15. For our good friend the Rave Lord, we're blessed enough to have a few options on how to fight him. The safest method is to go in with the Bellowing Ring and Power Within. You don't have to be in Red Seer Stone range for this one, and you can just barely win with 4 Chaos Fireballs if you land lava damage on 3 of them. My recommendation for this is to never lock onto Nito, aim directly at his feet instead. If you hit him in the torso, the hit is often too high up to leave behind a lava pool. Hit him in his bony chicken legs though, and his slow movement speed is likely to result in him taking that lava damage. Now that we've done that, head back to Laurentius again and spend some of the 75,000, or 60,000 if you lost pinwheel souls like I did, to push your flame all the way up to plus 15 if it wasn't there already. After that, you should have probably around 25k left over, and some consumable souls in your inventory if you don't. Hop on down to Quelana in Blighttown, and tell her that you'd like a quick enhancement, and bam, an Ascended Flame. With that in mind, we're headed to the Duke's Archives. Killing the boars is easy since they go down in two shots. One if you have power within active. And we kill the Crystal Golem along the way too. Put on the Ring of Sacrifice before letting Seath end and imprison you, and show the Jailer that a Servant of Chaos isn't so easily contained. Progress through the archives like in a normal playthrough until you reach Seath himself, and enjoy the fact that this is probably one of the easiest bosses in the run. With him being unable to avoid the lava pools, a couple of fireballs are all it takes to put down the duke, granting us the second of four lord souls. With that in mind, we'll be heading to Darkroot Garden to start our pass to the third. I personally used the basin bonfire and went up the ladder behind the hydra to access Sif, but you also have the option of grinding 20,000 souls for the quest of Artorius if you find that run up to be too long. Or you can just kill Andre and loot his corpse, you're some kind of monster. As for fighting Sif, it's really as simple as Bellowing Ring and Power Within with the Crown of Dusk. Good as the girls goes down in three or four fireballs, granting us the Covenant of Artorius. Put Sif's souls to good use and head down to Quailana for some more improvements to your flame. You should either be maxed out now or just a bit shy of it. Next, head to New Londo, home of the Ghost House and the worst ladder in the game. Not a fan of this one. But once you've made your way up it, get the key to the seal from Ingward. Fortunately for him, you don't have to kill him for it since you possess the Lord Vessel. Walk around the house, unlock the seal, drain the water, and run in to fight against the four kings. I tell you my loadout for the fight, but, well, it doesn't really matter. We're doing around 600 to 700 per shot, with six shots available to us. That's 3600 to 4200 damage out of their total health bar of 9504. 
That's not with Power Within, admittedly, but that would only give us a 40% buff, taking us to just under 6,000 damage, which would still fall short by over a third of their health bar. If we only use Gary Chaos Fireball, we're not going to win. But the only other damaging fire spell we can get from the Covenant, Chaos Storm, isn't just an RNG nightmare on whether it wants to hit the boss, it also has issues when specifically used in this boss fight, where the lava almost never seems to spawn, gimping its damage heavily. Thanks to the testing I've done on other saves, though, I do know that this fight is doable. It just requires a Chaos Pyromancy from Lost Isleth, Chaos Fire Whip. If we can just get that, we can win this fight. So logically, that just means doing Lost Isleth first, right? But unfortunately, this is where I have to come clean a bit. See, there's been a bit of a sword hanging over our heads this entire time. If you're big into challenge runs, then you might already know what I mean. I've avoided it up until now, but another major reason we need Quellag Skip is because she's completely immune to fire damage. Ray Chaos Fireball, Chaos Storm, Chaos Fire Whip, all useless against her, even if we had all three. And even if we do skip her, we end up in the same position against the Ceaseless Discharge, who takes no fire damage, and even the Bed of Chaos, whose little larval form is immune to. Even if we use Quellag Skip and Ceaseless Skip, we'd still be unable to collect all four of the Lord's Soul items to beat the game. If all we have is Pyromancies, then this challenge might have to end here. But then, that's not all we have, is it? The name of the challenge isn't Pyromancy only, and it isn't Great Chaos Fireball only either. This isn't even a Chaos Pyromancy only challenge, this is a Chaos only challenge. I might not be able to get the Chaos Ember without glitches, but that's not the only source of chaotic weapons. There are three that can naturally be found at the game. Two of them are locked behind Quellog's boss soul, but the last one? Well, the Abyss Greatsword utilizes the chaos mechanic automatically and without infusion, meaning that there's still one last chance for us to be able to reclaim this run. The only challenge is that it requires Artorias' soul to transpose, but look who already took out the Hydra, freed Dusk, and got the Broken Pendant. That's right, we already set up everything we needed to get into the DLC, so strap in because it's time. The Sanctuary Guardian is chump change at this point. Coming in at 2560 HP, you just need to hit it with a couple fireballs. Don't worry about complex setups, just go in with full health and power within, and you're going to drop it like a bag of rocks. If your flame isn't already a maxed out Ascended Flame, use the souls you get to max it out now, because this, without question, is the hardest fight in this entire challenge. When you stand in front of the Abyss Walkers Arena, be prepared to reset a lot. You have your choice of two loadouts for this one either using the Dusk Crown Ring or the Red Tearstone Ring. You need at least one of them, and you're not surviving a hit from Artie regardless of your choice. I personally recommend Dusk, since you don't have to lower your HP before the fight set it up, and you don't have to worry about Power Within killing you while at critically low HP. Whichever you choose, though, activate Power Within before you step into the arena, and be aware that you don't have much margin for error. Perfect play is the name of the game. With a maxed out Pyromancy Flame, you need to land 5 hits, and you can't afford to get hit once. Power Within will drain your health, and Artorias does not like giving you time to heal, but be patient. In my experience, there's only one move that's completely safe to counter 100% of the time, and it's the one he performs at mid-range where he steps forward to close the distance and performs a spinning horizontal slash. Walk backwards continuously until the sword starts the arc towards you, and then cast your spell while still walking backwards. If spaced just right, you'll be right outside the range of his attack, and you can hit him with yours. You might think that his buff charge up is safe, but be careful. He takes half damage during it, and you can't afford to waste even a few points in this fight. You can potentially land a hit by casting from just outside his buff's explosion radius, timing the hit with the end of the buff, but the timing is tight, and if you mistime it, then you basically need to restart the fight. With an enemy as agile as Artorias, you can't trust the lava to deal damage, making the whole fight run on razor-thin margins. In the end, though, after putting in enough time, you'll eventually get a fight, just like this one.
With that fight done and dusted, we have access to the Abyss Greatsword. Aside from the Chaos Blade and Quellag's Fury Sword, it's the only weapon in the game that uses the Chaos mechanic, where it gains a significant damage bonus from having more soft humanity, capping out at 10. The Greatsword requires 22 Strength, 18 Dex, 18 Ints, and 18 Faith. Technically though, you can get away with only 15 Strength, 18 Dex, and ignoring the other two stats entirely if you two-hand it. This is because the damage only scales off of Strength and Dex, and two-handing it at 15 Strength meets the minimums. Be warned though that your weapon will bounce off of enemies when you hit them. Your damage is fine, but it does look pretty dinky. If you want to use it as full power, be aware that you're going to have to grind a bit. I hunted down the Hero Souls and the Great Hero Soul on top of taking down the Gaping Dragon and the Stray Demon. I would have had enough to use it properly against Squellag, but I forgot about the Faith requirement during the recording and put 10 levels in health instead. Don't make the same mistake as me, or else your sword will bounce like bungee gum. Anyway, to test out our new weapon, we're going to be taking down Quellag first, and while it can be a bit time-consuming, it's just a matter of patience before we take the victory. You can swing by the Fair Lady and pick up the Chaos Storm spell by giving her all the humanity you've got if you like, though I mostly recommend doing it for the shortcut that we're going to need to progress. With that done, go ahead and take out Ceaseless with a couple baps on the hand with our fancy new sword. Using the Isolith shortcut to get to the Bed of Chaos, make sure that you take a moment to step off to the side and pick up Chaos Fire Whip from behind the Fire Whip Witch for later. Then stomp on the Mother of Chaos's branches and strike her down with the weapon we had forged, all in the name of laying her low. With her down, only one soul remains to be collected. Go back down to New Londo and plunge into the abyss while wearing the Crown of Dusk, the Dusk Crown Ring, and the Covenant of Artorias, along with the spells Power Within, Great Chaos Fireball, and Chaos Fire Whip. You can also bring along Chaos Storm if you're worried about running out of casts with only a pip of health left on the boss, but you will need to level up Attunement a bunch of times to get the additional two slots. I personally chose not to wear the Crown of Dusk, because it felt more thematically appropriate to wear the raiments of a Chaos Daughter, since sometimes you just have to sacrifice power for style points. This was a reset heavy fight for me at first, since I kind of forgot how to react to their moveset properly, a punishment for usually just Havel armoring them. But just like with the others, it's just a matter of dodging, hitting them while they recover from their swings, and remaining patient. After a while, you'll strike down the Four Kings, take back the Pequeathed Shard, and be ready to head to the true final boss. With all of the Lord's souls gathered, there's only one enemy remaining. Gwyn, Lord of Cinder, is nothing more than a test of your reflexes, tempered with RNG. And you can reduce a lot of that if you grab Havel's armor for defense. Pop power within, parry him, lob a chaos fireball at him while strafing behind him, and pray he doesn't fast swipe in response. Repeat this a couple times, and you can put him down with cast despair even without red tear stone. With that, relax in your chair as you bask in the glow of knowing that you can beat Dark Souls with nothing but the power of chaos. Howdy howdy folks, thank- I just want to say thank you for watching. I wasn't expecting as much interaction on my last video as I got, it caught me off guard how many people watched and commented on it. If you've got any questions about the routing for this one, or any ideas for other challenge runs I might be able to do, drop a comment and I'll try and answer it right quick. Y'all have a great day. Rapid, out.